People think that personal factors don't play a role in politics. I'm telling you, they do. Prestige. Zinoviev was jealous, as, as petty as that. Zinoviev was jealous of Trotsky because he thought, well, I've been with, Stalin, with Lenin for many years. I should be the boss. I should be in charge. I'm Lenin's natural heir. Who's this guy Trotsky? And so he was, he was jealous, as simple as that. And launched an attack against, a scurrilous attack against Trotsky. Particularly after Lenin's death, they produced a little book called The Errors of Trotskyism. It was the first time that the word Trotskyism was used. And he, unfortunately, he had the support of, uh, of Lenin's widow, of Krupskaya. She was uh, a personal friend, actually. They all ganged up. Zinoviev, Kamenev, Stalin, Krupskaya, The Errors of Trotskyism. He started this nonsense. Zinoviev, actually, Stalin was, was in a secondary position no, nobody knew Stalin. He was in a second. He was an obvious making all the run. But of course, Stalin eventually took over because he controlled the party apparatus. And uh, he started with the, 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 the split came in 1926 when Stalin, for the first time, put forward the argument of socialism in one country. Never mind that world revolution, never mind about uh, Germany, forget about all that. Socialism in Russia alone, socialism in. My, uh, Zinoviev and, and, and Kamenev took fight at that, they became, uh, they panicked, they broke with Stalin, they realized that things were going too far, they, they broke with Stalin, and they, uh, the, the, the question was posed of a block with Trotsky. Now many people in, Trotsky, in the Trotsky's camp were not in favor of this. So how, how can you form a block with this man, with this Zinoviev, with all his record and so on. And Trotsky answered in the following way, he said, well, Oh, by the way, it's true that Zinoviev put conditions. You see, when you, when you enter a political block, let's say that we form a block in the Labour Party, say, with the left reformers, they might object to part of our programme, and you might have to retreat. You might say, well, okay, for the sake of unity, for the sake of the common fight against the right, we will have to drop point number B or C. It might, might be necessary to do that kind of compromise. It? It's, it's possible. And, and Zinoviev objected to the theory of permanent revolution. I think it was, again, vanity on his part because of his role in 1917 and the rest of it. And Trotsky eventually agreed, reluctantly agreed to this. He agreed to, 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 to not include it in the program. Some of his followers objected to this, and Trotsky replied in the following. He said, now look, it's true that it's not, not a good thing that we make this concession, but it's necessary to, to do that to reach several thousand workers in Leningrad. Zinoviev was in charge of the, of the, of the party in, the, in Leningrad and Trotsky was hopeful that they would win over the, the, the proletariat of Leningrad. He was prepared to make that sacrifice. Although, he, of course, he, he stood by the permanent revolution, but it, it didn't figure in the, in the joint program. Of course, the, the, the answer is that, that that block broke down quite quickly. Because uh, it, 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 uh, Zinoviev's space was not secure in Leningrad. He, didn't, he controlled it bureaucratically, actually, same as Stalin. And therefore Stalin removed him bureaucratically. So that the, the, and then subsequently he capitulated to Stalin. Zinoviev and Kamenev were both very, very unstable politically. Very unstable. They capitulated to Stalin, so that was the end of that. So that the, uh, Trotsky never abandoned the theory of permanent revolution, but that was a tactical question for the sake of unity with uh, Zinoviev, which didn't last. Incidentally, just one, one small observation here. Uh, Stalin actually, he was also a complete opportunist. And uh, he, he took over the program of the left opposition after expelling Trotsky. He took over the idea of Trotsky, for example, five-year plans, collectivization. He gave it a hooligan and bureaucratic uh, content. But many people were, were, were fooled by that. Many oppositionists capitulated, went back to Stalin, including Kamenev and Zinoviev and Radek, Trotsky did not. Trotsky did made firm. He says, no, we're not accepting this. Precisely because he was uh, defending, although he knew that they would be defeated and so on, but he wanted to defend the ideas at all costs. One question. How many people in this room have ever read anything about Zinoviev? Show of hands. One. You know, how many things have you read about Zinoviev, right? One. I've read two. I beat you two. <laughs> There's nothing. And, uh, and how was it? Pretty poor. Very poor. Oh, two it was, two actually. Ah, well, ah, ah, same as you. All right, same as you. Okay. 
I'll accept, I'll accept the draw game. Uh, very poor. You know, uh, uh, how many people have read something by Kamenev? Nobody. I might have read the odd article, I can't remember. There's nothing there. And even Bukharin, Bukharin had one or two interesting things, probably something. He was, Lenin did say that he was one of the uh, party theoreticians. Although, to be honest with you, Le Lenin also said that he was very uh, abstract, very academic, very undialectical, and that's true if you read Bukharin's stuff. It's very, it, it, it's not as profound as, uh, as the writings of Trotsky and Lenin. Really speaking, the only two worthwhile theoreticians in the Bolshevik party was Lenin and Trotsky. And today, therefore, we can say, well, Trotsky's ideas still are absolutely relevant and absolutely correct, but who remembers Zinoviev? Who remembers Kamenev? If it comes to that, who remembers Bukharin? Or Stalin? It's only Trotsky's works, that, and it's, it's true, if you read them, and I, I urge all comments, so please don't accept my word. Don't accept anything that I've said here today. Find out for yourselves, please. Uh, by the way, don't read books about Trotsky. Don't read books about Marx. Read Trotsky and Marx. You'll find it very easy. It's not difficult at all. And you, make up your, you will find that there's an enormous profundity of thought there, which is very, very useful. Now, what else have we got here? Uh, service. 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 There's a, there's a whole industry, actually. It's a very profitable industry. If you want to make money these days, don't bother with banks. You know, you know, write, write, book, write nasty books about Lenin and Trotsky. You make a couple of. All the universities will buy them, and that's a lot of money. You know? <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it is, it's disgusting, actually. It's completely disgusting. And just, 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 just to fi finish, you see, Trotsky once said Trotsky was subjected to the most monstrous slanders during his lifetime. I don't think anyone was, any individual has been so viciously slandered and insulted and. Day after day after day in the press of the world, you know. Very difficult to answer that, although he did. He, he did that. But Trotsky said the following. It's a marvelous expression. The locomotive of history is truth, not lies. The locomotive of history is truth. Not, and the truth eventually will prevail. And that's the position now. Seventy years after this uh, cowardly... Uh, agent of Stalin, this assassin, drove an ice pick through that marvellous uh, brain. Seventy years later, we still can find enormous, it's not a question of, uh, not a moral question, say, or, uh, a great example to follow, that's not the point. It's in the writings that you find the whole man. And these writings are very powerful weapons, the same as the writings of Lenin, of Marx. You know, I mean, frankly, you asked about money, you see, uh, yeah, it's quite amusing. We're entitled to a bit of a, of a laugh occasionally, you know, we must have a good laugh occasionally. This crisis of capitalism, you know, the collapse of the banks and all the rest of it, none of the bourgeois economists predicted that. They said the opposite. They said it wasn't going to occur. And some, I've been re reading some of the bourgeois, the orthodox economists lately, and they, one of them actually said, yeah, a prominent economist, I can't remember his name, doesn't matter, prominent American economist, says, well, the truth of the matter is, for the last 30 years, all of the predictions of the economists have been, in the best of cases, useless, and in the worst, positively harmful. And this is a key economist. You know, in Germany at the present time, 20 years after the collapse of the Berlin Wall, you know what's the best seller in German bookshops? Let me surprise you, Marx's capital. Marx has come back to haunt them. Why? Because they find no explanation for this crisis in the writings of the official economists, and they will find, of course, a very uh, serious, a very thorough explanation in the writings of Karl Marx. So I make no apology. Very delighted to come in. We'll speak again on other matters which you've raised, go into them in greater detail. But what I would say is this, I repeat, don't accept, don't take as good coin either the writings of service or what Alan Woods has just said. No, no, no. Make your own mind up. But the only way you can make your mind up about Marxism is to read Marx and read Lenin and read Trotsky. And I guarantee you'll find it an enormously rewarding 
experience. Not difficult. And you will find here many uh, profound insights into the world, not the world of uh, 1940 or 1848 or 1970, no, the world now. Very, very, very profound insights which help us to understand. And of course, our task is to change the world. That's true. But in order to change it, first of all, you have to understand it. And that's the great contribution, not just of Trotsky, but the other great Marxist thinkers of the past, that they provide, provide us with a powerful analytical tool which help us to understand the world in order to correct and change it.